All right, here we go. Wednesday, 5.30. Wednesday at 5.30, Facebook Live with Mel Raposo. We'll wait a few minutes for people to jump on. I know it takes a little while for people to come on and get settled, but... Uh, all right, Billy, Chad, Aniyana, Aloha, and Mildred, and Beatles, of course, might look alike. Getting longer, Beatles, getting longer. <laughs> Taking forever, though. Hi, Suzanne. How are you? How are you guys doing? John, mahalo for joining us. Hello, everybody. And uh, yeah, I'm so happy you guys are here uh, again. Uh, we get the full hour today, so we're going to talk about a bunch of stuff. Hey, Bill, what's up? Um, mostly about what's going on on Kauai and, uh, and uh, what's coming up on this island during this beautiful, wonderful holiday season. Want to wish everybody happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Hey, Maria, how's it going? Uh, you know, it's uh, my favorite time of year, really, the, the, the holiday season, Christmas season. Um, we just put up our Christmas tree yesterday. Nice, nice, beautifully decorated Christmas tree, thanks to uh, Patsy. Patsy had decorated them all by herself. We got one little snowman as the star on the top of the tree. <laughs> So it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas here in the Raposa house. So the only thing missing are the kids. They're up in us in uh, Oregon, but we uh, will be joining them right after Christmas. Hey, aloha, Jason, Pua, Lisa, Lovelyn. Oh man, a bunch of you. Thank you guys for coming, Karen, Arrow, Kana, Shiro, Chair, Kana Shiro. How was the meeting today? I hope you had a good uh, first meeting of the the new term. Um, Koli. Uh, Don, Jackie, Carrie Lee, Nalani, and uh, Shah Ali Ahmad, the guy that made my suit, uh, my favorite suit. Anyway, thank you guys all. Hey, Carlos, aloha there, my man. Long time no see. Give me a buzz, bro. Let's get together for some coffee. Uh, anyway, yeah, I just want to wish everybody happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Uh, we'll be getting out of here uh, right after. Uh, on the 27th, we'll be spending a week with the kids up in Oregon. So looking forward to that. Um, actually cannot wait to get out of here uh, to go enjoy a little bit of uh, the cold weather up there in Oregon. Uh, so, yeah, as, as as far as the going-ons over here, uh, I don't know how many of you went to the Lights on Rice Parade. Unfortunately, I missed it. I had to work that night, so uh, I unfortunately had to get some sleep. And um, so I missed it, but I heard a lot of good things about the parade uh my my uh workmate up at the timbers resort uh, took her kids and uh, what she said was that you know the the smiles on the kids faces uh, a lot of kids they she said it was a lot a lot of kids hey leilani and margie and bethany um it's just a, a, a new, usually unusual amount of uh, kids so that was good you know that's what we do um, that's what we do. Uh, we do these things for the kids and give them that, you know, once a year they get to go, um, uh, and check out the, the nice, beautiful lights, uh, on, on Rice Street. So, uh, and also don't forget the Festival of Lights there at the, at the Historic County Building with all the, the, the park in front, they light it up as well as all of those ornaments and trees and, and displays inside the County Building. Uh, that's going to be up till December 29th, uh, including Christmas Eve. So, Make sure you take the kids over there too. Santa is there and uh, you get to go and take a picture with Santa. Hey, hello, Irene. And uh, just Mabu hi from the Philippines. Margie, aloha, all the way from the Philippines. Holy moly. Um, so, yeah, make sure you get the kids over there because that's, that's what this, this season is all about. I mean, I, you know, we as adults enjoy it, but uh, not as much as the kids. So make sure you get them over there. It's free. Uh, you know, go grab your hot chocolate and, and uh, go stop by, go see Santa, see all those lights. It's amazing the display that they got over there and uh, the history behind it. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to ruin it. You go down there and there's the, the stories up on the boards and you get to see what an amazing uh, story that, that whole, uh, that whole lights and the, and the, and the ornaments and the trees, uh, how did it all started? Hey, Wendy and Jimmy and Belinda and Smiley, Smiley Lay, aloha. Yeah, so make sure you guys stop by over there. Also, on December 15th, the Waimea Christmas Lights Parade. Uh, 
<clears throat> and you, we all know about that, right in Waimea Town, from 5.30 to 8 o'clock, they close the bridge. So get into Waimea before 5.30, but from 6.15 to 11 o'clock is the actual celebration. The parade will start, uh, I guess, at 6.30 probably, and, it, and that is a beautiful parade. So if you miss the, the rice, uh, lights on rice, get out to Waimea. That is one heck of an event, and I, and I hope, uh, hope we can make it out there on the 15th. Uh, that is one that, uh, again, if you miss rice, or if, even if you made it to rice, uh, get over there and um, and just go visit that old Waimea, old plantation style. Everybody in the streets, uh, big big block party almost, and and a beautiful beautiful display of floats and and lights and music. And uh, it is just going to be a fun time. So uh, December fifteenth at uh, in Waimea town, obviously. Uh, go early, get your parking and uh, a lot of food, a lot of a lot of good things going on. And the parade, I believe, starts at 6.15 or 6.30. But the um, road is going to close at 5.30. So make sure you're in Waimea before that. And they'll open up the road again at 8 o'clock. So um, make it an evening and enjoy you guys selves out there. Also on the 15th at the uh, Kmart parking lot, uh, Holly Jolly Holiday Fair. And that is put on by, uh, I think, the Kauai Made people. So it's all Kauai Made products at the, at the Kmart parking lot from 9 a.m. to 2. So if you can make it out to Kmart, make sure you get out there. Uh, and uh, hey, hold on, growing a beard, huh? Yes, my sister Chris, all the way from uh, Seattle, Washington. Yeah, I'm trying to grow this thing out. I don't know, it's, it ain't happening. It's slower, and I wish it we should go faster. Hey, Wes, Lynn, Teresa, congratulations again on your uh, your wedding and your uh, you and your husband. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming you're on your vacation or your honeymoon. I don't know if you're back yet, but anyway, congratulations, Andrew. And Richard, thank you for joining us. Hot chocolate for the kiddos and hot toddies for the adults. Okay, Lisa. Um, okay, Bethany, Kawhi Corral concert on Friday. If you want to post the details, I don't have that. But uh, if you want to just go ahead and post where and when, um, we'll definitely promote that as well. So Holly Jolly Holiday Fair, Kmart parking lot, um, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. So make sure you stop by. Oh, you back to work already, Teresa? Oh, gosh. Hey, Damien. And Senator Drew Kanuha, all the way from the Big Island. Welcome, and Thanks for joining us. Uh, New Year's Eve celebration, Poipu Beach Park. Um, hey, Drew, I hope you stay on because I got, I got some, some things I'm going to talk about that I'm, I'm hoping you can hang on and listen because I maybe even chime in. But uh, Drew is a colleague of mine on the county council, was on HSAC, our state association, and then he successfully ran for – uh, state senator there on the Big Island and was successful, so he's a new senator. So yeah, hang on because I got some issues that uh, I wanted to bring up, and hopefully you can take back to your co uh, cons your colleagues back at the at the Big Square Building. December thirty first, five p.m. to eight thirty, uh, the annual New Year's Eve celebration, Poipu Beach Park, fireworks and everything, music, entertainment, a lot of food. December thirty first, if you can make it, Poipu Beach Park. That's the annual um, uh, New Year's Eve celebration. So hey, Clayton. Thank you for joining us. I think we got it all covered as far as events. If you got anything else, go ahead and post it. Hanalei Town Holiday Celebration Sunday afternoon. Okay, Jimmy, thank you. I'm not sure. Is that the one at the community center? Um, but, yeah, go ahead go ahead and post it, and, um, and I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, broadcast it out. Uh, Kauai Voices has a free pop-up concert on the 20th. Okay, yeah, if you post the event, make sure you post the details so we can – Get everybody uh, informed of where these things are. Hey, Tom, Nicole, and uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Happy holidays, Margie, all the way in the Philippines. Uh, tell our friends out there we said hello. Aloha, Pat Baniaga, Coach Baniaga. Thanks for joining us. So that's what we got. Okay, we got the lights on rice we talked about, the Holly Jolly, Holly Jolly Holiday Fair at the Kmart parking lot on the on the 15th, as well as the Waimea Town Christmas lights parade. Yeah, get out there. May, may, again, grab your kids, whether they want to or not. And they're not gonna. They're gonna love you for it. Okay, Jackie. And uh, Leo. <laughs> All right. Okay. So what are we talking about today? We got a bunch of stuff going on. Um, first, to a Tango Vailoa. What do you guys think? You guys think he was robbed? You know, I, I watched that ceremony and I, or the the event, the the, the Heisman presentation, and it was pretty cool. Um, three outstanding candidates. Uh, obviously, it was down to uh, Tua and and uh, and the eventual winner. And I, I think Tua deserved it. Both of them did. And uh, you know, Tua's still young. He's still got more time. So uh, I, I I will make my prediction today 
that he will be the Heisman Trophy winner next year. No doubt about that. Uh, Talofa. <laughs> Aloha, Wendy. Talofa to you as well. Um, yeah, a remarkable uh, talent to a great humble guy. And uh, we just got to be proud as a state that this uh, – and St. Louis High School. Uh, what, what can you say about St. Louis High School and what they produce out of that school? Their quarterback coach. Uh, I, I would, I'm surprised he's still coaching at the high school level. Uh, this guy is going to be offered a job somewhere. When you look at the, the quality of quarterbacks coming out of this state and especially coming out of St. Louis, uh, amazing, amazing. So, uh, yeah, best of luck to Tua as he as moves forward. And, and we've got a whole bunch of the stable of Hawaiian talent out there in the NFL today. Uh, I think it's more than, than we've ever had. And uh, so really, really proud to be here, uh, part in this state. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about, and I'll jump to it right now because I know Senator Kanuha is on there, is, is you know, I think you saw, many of you saw my post um, about the snakes, and it caused quite a bit of discussion about the snakes. They're going to bring four snakes, supposedly four male sterilized snakes, um, and, and then they're going to use that to, to train for, uh, uh, what the heck kind of dog was it? Border collies. They're going to train four bar, border collies using these snakes. and. Uh, you know, I, I got to be honest, uh, and, I, and I understand why people believe that uh, we, we should, you know, really this boils down to, again, to the birds, right? We got to protect the birds. There's a potential threat uh, to these birds by our snakes. Well, my God, um, we don't have an issue with snakes right now. Yeah, every so often some knucklehead from the mainland brings it in here. Usually it's a military person that had it as a pet, brought it over here. And then cannot take care of it and then let it go. And then they find that it's usually a boa constrictor or some other kind of pet snake that, you know, why would anybody want a snake is beyond me. But, you know, different strokes for different folks. But we don't have a threat. It's, it's not a threat. It's, it's not a threat. And uh, to, to have the state come down and say, hey, we're going we're gonna to bring in four snakes. Yeah, sterilize. And, and we're going to train four dogs. What are these dogs going to do? Well, they're just going to uh, put my closer. I cannot hear. Can you guys hear me okay? I, I don't know. My, my meter is going pretty. I, I don't know. My wife is telling me somebody said put the mic. I don't know. Anyway, um, well, there's no threat. I don't, I don't see the threat where it warrants that. And, I, and in my post, I said, you know what? It, granted, there, there, there is. If, if we had snakes on the island, and yeah, there would be some problems with the birds, but at this point in time, we got a bigger problem. The yeah, volume is good, so I'm not sure. Text that person back and say, uh, oh, was was on here? Okay, anyway, sorry, I missed it. Uh, anyway, um, uh, let, let's put our energies in. See, again, I don't get, I don't get this state. And again, uh, no offense to, to Senator Kanua, he's brand new, so. Um, what I don't understand is when we, when we create these issues, right? So we're gonna create this issue. Hey, you know what? We got to bring some snakes here. We got to train our dogs just in case um, we have a problem and, and it's going to protect our, our birds. Well, you, you know, Senator, and, and this, take this back to that square building. Why don't we get dogs that are trained in drug detection like we do? We have a few throughout the state and, and make it mandatory that every single parcel that comes in, like every single human being that leaves the island or the state has to go through an inspection through TSA. Why aren't we doing that with the, the parcels of mail and, and deliveries coming in, FedEx, UPS, DHL, uh, Aloha Cargo, the ships, the barges? Why aren't we going after those? Because we do have a problem with drugs. We do have a problem with drugs. We have kids that are dying. We have kids that are uh, killing themselves. We have the families that are destroyed. And yet, no, 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 we're not talking about that. We're going, we're going after the, the, the snakes that we don't have because they may cause a threat to the birds. You know, I'm tired of hearing about that. Let us focus on the, the drugs. When you look at the issues we have today, the homeless issues, the, all of these issues, yes, uh, the, the, the market, the housing market is a cause of it. But when you look at the, and I know this because I've spoken to the homeless community, a lot of these people are out there um, are homeless because of drugs. They lost their lives because of drugs. And we sit back and say, now we're going to bring in dogs and snakes and we're going to train our dogs to go look for snakes. Screw the snakes. Screw the snakes. Let's get a dog in every, every single port. Let's get a dog at every single post office, every 
at the at the at the main post office at the airport and have the dog run through that thing every day. Every ship that comes in, that that every barge, have the dog run through that every day. You wanna you wanna get, do some good, state. Do go after the real problem. Commuter terminals, TSA free. Those small planes, private jets coming in, run a dog to those damn things every day. We got heroin coming in. We're getting ice coming in. And we're worrying about snakes that don't exist. A few pet snakes go get out and, and we, we go bananas. But the problem that we have had here for decades and decades and decades is drugs, not, not snakes. And birds are, 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 are having a ball on Kauai because they're protected from lights and noise and cats and everything else. So please, state, listen. I know it's a done deal, but, but put your energies and your efforts where the problems lie. And right now, the problem in this state, overwhelming problem is drugs. Uh, right at Anchor Cove, which is where I, I had my camping headquarters, one of the shops just got broken in. Three kids on camera with a, with a pipe wrench right into the front glass door, ran in, grabbed stuff, a smash and grab, typical, and, and split. I mean, 10.30 at night relatively early you know you think about it not even afraid of the cameras and the and the alarm and we're gonna have the snakes please chime in you guys because uh, i know that we got some people out there that uh, yeah fentanyl too i mean it, it's i mean really I'm, I'm i'm saying that we have issues we have drug issues major 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 drug issues on this island and yet how can we take the eye off the ball and now go create this illusion to the public and, and, and really taking credit for something that I think is one of the most stupidest ideas that this state has come up with. I don't know what Ige is thinking. I don't know what the Department of Ag is thinking. I guess job security. I don't know, maybe somebody's friend owns a, a dog farm or a snake farm that they're going to make money off of this. But it ain't going to do crap for the people. It ain't going to do crap for our kids. Yeah, it's going to look good at somebody's report that said, yeah, you know, we're protecting birds. We, you know, no. You know what? The heck with the birds right now. we got a bigger problem with drugs. Let's go after the drugs. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I know people in, in, that, in that world, in that drug world, and the stuff is coming in like candy. The stuff is coming in on the boats, on the planes, in UPS, in FedEx, at U, USPS, a postal service, and no one's checking. Yeah, every so often we catch one, you know, oh, gosh, we got one. They follow the box to somebody's house. They arrest some poor soul and make it a big issue. But, at the end, you know, so, you know, you take one pound off the street and a thousand pounds get through. That's crap. And we worry about snakes. We worry about birds. Anyway, um, I'm getting upset here. I look at my paper. But, yeah, chime in. I mean, you know, it's, it's us that we, we're the taxpayers. We elect our leaders. And... Um, this, when I saw it in, 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 uh, in the news, I, 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 I just kind of like, what the heck are we doing? Um, how, how, uh, how, you know, what are we doing? You're on the right track. I work in Guam and every fence has a chute to trap snakes. I hardly saw the dogs get to the snakes. You know, yeah, Charlie. I mean, I, I, I've been to Guam once. I was on my way to Korea with the, with the military and our plane broke down and we got the spent a few days in Guam and um, they got a ton of snakes there. They also got a ton of uh, coconut crabs over there. And, you know, I, again, uh, we, we, we create this a problem. You know, one of the things I, I, I get really frustrated is a, with is when we, we make an issue of a non-issue and then we pursue it. And, and um, it's kind of like the Rice Street development project, the 17 million that the county is spending on that. I, I didn't support that last vote. I voted against it because, you know, we, we're, we're creating this, and it's a lot of money, a lot of money that could be used to make Kapa'a or Hanapipi Town, where they have active uh, economic drivers going on currently that's unsafe. Yeah, the traffic's unsafe. And, um, but we create these, these illusions that, uh, you know, we're just going to toss money at it and, and we're going to fix it. Trust me. I've been in government long enough to know that the fact that you toss money at an issue is not the, it's not the solution. That's not the solution. And we should be focusing on the issues that affect our people. We should be focusing on the issues that affect our kids. 
And right now, and I don't have to tell you how many suicides we've had recently. And I hate bringing that up because I know there's someone on this Facebook Live right now that has a very close connection. You okay? You okay? I'm oh, sorry. Um, very close connection to someone that uh, took their life. But it's a reality on this island. You know, uh, it's unprecedented. It's just, it, and it's not going to go away. And we're worrying about snakes and worrying about birds and worrying about all this other crap when we should be focusing on the issues that affect our kids. Anyway, um, how, are, how about they buy one trained dog versus bringing snakes to train one here? You know, that, I put that in my post as well. And then my good friend, uh, I'm not going to mention his name, but he posted as well. That, you know, and I, and I, I, I didn't think about this, but even our drug dogs that we have at KPD, they got to be constantly trained. So, you know, if you, if you bring the, the trained dog here, um, you, don't have it, you don't have the snakes to train them with. So for me, it's just trash the whole damn program. Trash the program and focus. Go bring in 15 trained drug dogs. And let's, how about if we double or triple the effort at the, at, the, at the points of entry in the state? I guarantee you that's going to uh, create a disruption in, in, the, in, the, in the supply of drugs. And gosh, we might even catch one of the big time drug dealers. You know, we might. But it's almost like we, we, you know, we talk about it. We talk about the anti-drug movement. We talk about the fights. We talk about all this garbage. And, and we don't do anything about it. Yeah, we're going to put up a drug treatment center, but that's not fixing the problem. The problem is the drugs. The problem is the supply. Yes, I fully support the drug center. I, I fully support. I think our kids need somewhere to go. But that's not going to solve the problem. You know, whether it's 12 bids or 20 bids, whatever it is, yeah, we're going to help some. But the problem is not the, the kid. We, we, we need to stop the, 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 the drugs from coming in. Um, yeah, look, KPD dogs would have a lot of action at the schools. I agree. Uh, of course, the DOE is there, no invasion of privacy. Screw that. That's not your locker. That's not. You come to the school, you open yourselves up to a dog sniffing your bag. Period. You know, how, how, how tough are we going to be on this fight? Are oh, we just going to put up posters, have rallies around? You think that's going to – you know, it hasn't worked. <laughs> Everything we've done so far has not worked as it relates to the supply coming into the, to the state. So stop it. Stop faking it. Stop pretending. And every time somebody takes their life, we all, you know, we light candles and, we, you know, we got to do something. We got to do something. Well, here, there's an opportunity, state. Here's an opportunity for you to do something. Get a dog in every single port, at every single airport, at every single gate, including commuters, so those rich dudes that come in with their private jets get the same treatment as we do. And I'm telling you, it's going to make a dent. It's going to cause a dent. It will. It's not going to solve the problem. It's not the answer. But I tell you what, it's better than four dogs trained to sniff out snakes. Pathetic. Also, um, Keith Kanashiro, prosecutor Honolulu. I just I noticed now he's got his letter of he's a target from the FBI investigation. What a mess! Um, what a mess! You know, I I just saw that the other day, and I'm thinking, my gosh, they went after the police chief, his wife. Now they're going after the prosecutor. A few cops are already in jail, um, and this elaborate scheme to discredit the police chief's uh, former police chief in Honolulu, the wife's uncle pretended fake stage this whole mail theft thing and now we find out that the Honolulu uh, prosecutor is, is uh, possibly involved unbelievable how, how, you know I, I you know it's frustrating when you sit back and you you know you wonder why people don't trust government and and, and that's exactly why and and um, it's too bad it's too bad so you know I, I wish you guys could talk back because it, it's uh, you know, have this thing two way because you know I can go on all day long as you can tell but I do want to hear your your perspective on a lot of these Issues because I think these issues are what affects uh, the people of Kauai. Um, it's pointless to train the dogs when there's nothing for them to be searching for. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. I mean, you know, so you know, do we bring radiation here, like uh, uh, like a nuclear bomb fallout on the island, so we can train some dogs in the detection of nuclear fallout? You know, I mean, I know that's extreme, but that's kind of the same mentality. Uh, and I don't know enough about snakes, but I know that we, I know that we have not had any. So I think they may have found one here a, a while back. And I know we got mongoose. You know we've caught those, but there's no um, 
present threat to to anything um, uh, with, 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 with these snakes. So, yeah, I mean, again, I, I didn't. It just baffles me. I don't know if Senator Kanohe is still on. He probably jumped off when he heard me say snakes. But Senator, if you're on, please chime in. Um, I'm not sure uh, what your take on that is. But I know, Drew, I know you are very, very familiar with uh, the drug problems statewide. Uh, it, it's just very, 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 very sad. Um, yes, Trina, you know, if my kid... I would have no problem with the dog sniffing my 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 kid's bag. I don't. I, I you know what? Because I tell you what, if that uh, my kid had drugs in his backpack, the least of his worries would be the police. Mm -hmm. That'd be the least of his worries would be getting arrested. Uh, and I think that probably holds true for most of you on this uh, on this session. Hey, Christina and Lenny, um, thanks for joining us. Thanks for thanks for joining us. You're coming in right in a heated time. We're talking about snakes. We're talking about the state training dogs to go find snakes because I think they think it's a bigger problem than many of the other problems that we got. I mean, you think of it, just look around. Uh, look around and and uh, see the social issues, the problems that we have facing our kids today. Uh, hey, Paul. Aloha. Welcome back. Um, they, they struggle every day. Aloha, Lenny. They struggle every day. It's a different world today that they're going through that we did in our generation. So we we need to we need to help. We need we need to do something about that. Um it, it's it, it's I mean drugs is, is one of the problems and and that I think that we we can do a lot more. And we don't. We don't. And and you know it, it, you, you, it, you know it's a police problem, it's a prosecutor's problem, it's a court's problem. It, everybody needs to get on this on this wagon if we want to stop uh if we want to stop um drugs uh, you know we see you see singapore a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, foreign countries you know when you when you go on their plane you get a you get a little paper that you got to hold with you throughout your visit and when you go back you got to hand it back in to make sure that you read it but it says drugs in this country punishable by death now i am not advocating that we apply the death penalty. What I'm saying is that we need to do more um, than simply put flyers out in the schools, um, have drug-free concerts. And, I mean, no, that, you know, you, sol you solve the problem by, by getting rid of the, the root and the root is the supply. If there's no supply, you got no problem. And, and then of course, then you get the treatment and the, so you get the prevention and the treatment and the, and the aftercare, all of that we, we need. But uh, if, you, if, you, if you break up the pipeline, uh, then these kids cannot get the drugs. And I think that's, that's the focus that I think we got to go on. And um, the problem is the ACLU, you're right. I mean, they sue, they sue about everything. You know, the ACLU, and I, 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 trust me, I support civil rights. I support constitutional rights. But at what point does someone else's behavior become unconstitutional? You know, <clears throat> you got the freedom of speech. Right. The Constitution says you can go out and say anything you want. You can carry whatever sign you want. But at what point does my rights become uh, 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 important? When your actions infringe on my rights, then it should be wrong. And I think that's where we've lost it. This country has, has really, really lost it. We're saying, hey, you know, you can say whatever you want, even if it offends people. Well, that's no, that's not, that's not true. You know, when, when your actions affect my rights, then, then that action needs to stop. And uh, ACLU, I know you, you, you disagree with that. You think people can go out and say what they want. And, but no, I disagree. I think that when your actions infringe on my right, then, it, then we have a problem. Um, and I think we've, we've totally lost that now. And, and it's, that's why, if you notice... Everything that's that's going on in the world today, in the country, and from from the from the national level down, it, and then we talk about this every week. Is this is this? Hey, John, welcome. Thanks for joining us. And Deslin uh, is is based around this anger and hate and 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 just the desire to to say things that hurt people. And and you know, I don't remember it being that way when I was growing up. You know, I'm sure it agree uh, it, it occurred, but it just wasn't as prevalent as it is today, and accepted, and uh, you know, encouraged. 
And that is where I think the, the, this stuff got to stop because um, it, it's just wrong. It's just wrong. Um, gosh, I had something on my mind that I was going to just say, and I can't remember what it was. Mm. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. John Bruni. Hey, you guys remember that um, if you watched Election Day, I was driving around in that slingshot, Polaris slingshot, the three-wheeled beast Chevy 175 horsepower four cylinder um right down in aloha motorsports uh down at anchor cove john baroni go give him a call check him out go test one out he has a combiner raid you can rent him for four hours or the whole day uh but if you haven't done anything exciting recently go down there and get your your slingshot take it around the island cruise around the island um it's just a, a great experience uh great experience perfect for people that don't have a motorcycle license because you know there's nothing like riding a two-wheeled beast, a Harley Davidson around the island. But if you don't have a motorcycle license uh, and you want the comfort of stability of a of a vehicle, but yet the the, the excitement of a motorcycle, uh, go see John down at Aloha Motorsports at Anchor Cove. You'll see him. I'm sure you've seen him on the road. And um, yeah, it's fun, man. It's exciting. Exciting. All right, Larry, you also solved the problem if you remove the demand for the drugs. That is absolutely true. I mean, if we can get our kids to where they don't want to try drugs, if we can get the kids to understand the dangers of it. But as one uh, drug addict told me a while back, said, you know, Mel, how you expect uh, an addict to quit when the feeling that we get is the best feeling in the world, better than any other feeling that you can imagine, how how you expect me to stop doing the drug. So the key is we got to stop them before they start, number one, and, and, and it becomes harder for them to start if we stop the supply or if we, if we decrease the supply. And if you decrease the supply, uh, then hopefully that, that affects the, the, the ease of our young kids getting, getting their hands on this stuff. Um, again, it's, it's a whole change in culture that we got to, you know, we, we got to deal with, I mean, we got to, number one, admit to the fact that we have some serious issues with drugs. I, I, I mean, we all know it, right? we know, and yet uh, we, we, we kind of, um, we kind of turn, turn a deaf ear, you know, and, and just hope that it'll go away. It's not going to go away. Um, the addiction ages are much younger now. I think Kawhi, the youngest uh, addicted kid, I think was nine years old, and it may even be lower now. And uh, it's very, very sad. You know, one of the things this state is contemplating, and I know this is a very controversial topic, very, very controversial topic, and it's the, the uh, recreational marijuana. Uh, we have legislators in the state that want to legalize the recreational use of marijuana. Now, I don't care what anybody says. I, I don't, because I have lived my life um, on, on all, with all kinds of people. I've, I've, I've hung out with, with a lot of good people. I've hung out with a lot of bad people in my life. Um, and I will tell you, I really don't care what anybody tells me. I don't really care what the, the bull crap studies that people post on the internet. The fact of the matter is that um, marijuana, Today, the marijuana of today is not like the marijuana from the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. That's number one. It's a different drug. It's not this recreational kickback. Uh, it's a very highly addictive drug today based on the levels of THC that these crops have been uh, uh, modified, hybrid. They've, they've been bred very high levels of THC, very addictive. So. Now, what you do as an adult on your own time, I don't care. You want to go smoke a joint after work in your backyard? Have at it. Have at it. But when you make this marijuana recreationally legal, the message that we are now sending to the kids is that it's okay. It's, it's, it, it's not bad. You know, we legalized medical marijuana but the state flawed when they when they the the the, the requirements to get that license are so so uh, relaxed 
that anybody that has uh, that can go into a doctor and say I got chronic pain gets a card. But I'm okay with the the, the medical marijuana use. I, I I think there is a definite value to certain medical conditions and diseases, cancer, multiple sclerosis. Um, um, there, there's there's what well, you know what I'm talking about. So I, I fully support that, and I believe that the, the, the CBD part of the marijuana, the medicine part, does work, and it does help a lot of people. But by us saying that we are going, now want to consider legalizing recreational marijuana, number one, it's, it's, again, it's the greed of money that is altering our uh, rational thinking, right? We're now saying, nah, you know, but the money's so good. With that money... We can create programs. To, no, you're stupid. You're creating the problem so you can raise money to fix the problem. That, that makes no sense. The bottom line is this. If we want to fight and, uh, the drug issues and we want to reduce the drug problems on, uh, in this state, uh, then we got to be serious. And we got to deal with it and, and not... Again, pretend that it's going to go away or look for this snake oil salesman that's coming in and say, hey, you know, just legalize marijuana with all that money. Go look at Colorado, Oregon. Read the real reports, not the reports that are put on the Internet by these pro dopers. No, read the scientific data. Read the data from the law enforcement journals that come out from these states that are now uh, uh, it's legal. Recreational marijuana is legal. Read those. Read the law enforcement reports. Read the, read the judicial, the judi judiciary reports. Read the reports that say the, the numbers of car accidents now in these states that have legal marijuana, um, a very high percentage of these operators uh, are on marijuana. So, I mean, you know, believe what you want. But once, and I said this in the debate at, in Waimea, where my opponent said he was going to look at uh, look at recreational marijuana because the money wants to tax the hell out of it. And I said, when we start looking at money as the justification to bring in these social ills to our community, we are going down the wrong road. And that's what the state is doing when they're looking at recreational marijuana, when they're looking at gambling. And everybody says, yeah, well, gambling, you know, I'll see, listen. If the motivation to, to, to legalize an illegal activity is money, then it's wrong. Then it's wrong. Because the money will not solve the problems that come with the legalization of this illegal act. It's just not going to happen. Talk to the states that have done it. So I've been blessed because I've been able to go around this country and talk to jurisdictions all over this country. And every one of them, every single one of them has said the same thing. Don't do it. Keep your gambling out. Definitely keep your legal marijuana, your legalization of marijuana out. Because the social problems that are caused by these acts and these activities aren't worth the money that you raise. I, I'm not sure why. I mean, it, it's, it's, we're going down the wrong path, state and county, and we, we, we better get a grip. And because, you know, once you legalize, this activity, you're not going to be able to stop it. Like alcohol, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to disagree that alcohol is a problem. I'm not going to disagree that alcohol caused a lot of deaths on the road. Yeah, because it's true. So I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, but, but I can be honest, I'm a realist. You're not going to make alcohol illegal. You know, you can, you can put as, as much restrictions on as you want. You can raise the drinking age. You can uh, prohibit the drinking in certain areas, but you're not going to make drinking illegal. But does that give us the right to now or the, or the justification to go out and legalize another problem? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But see, politics, you got to be careful um, what you say because of so many votes hang on this. There's a lot of people in this state right now that support legalizing marijuana. And a lot of those people never voted for me in the mayor's race. They voted for Derek because he, he was open to it. I, I, I don't care. I, I don't, you know, I'm not saying this because I want your vote. I'm saying this because we got to save our kids and protect our kids. Honey, uh, NBC, driving pot smokers are impaired. Absolutely. 
So I say, you want to smoke in your house? Smoke them up. You know, in the military, they used to say, smoke them if you got them. But that, that doesn't mean you go out and, and, and make this illegal activity legal. Uh, I, I am so uh, upset about this. So, again, you know, it's something that we as, as voters got to make sure we let our legislators know, both at the county level and at the state level. We don't want that. We don't want that. We don't want our kids to be subject and exposed to open marijuana smoking. We don't want that. And I'm telling you, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get worse. And I predict that this legislature, if not this session, the next one, will pass it. I, I really believe that because that's the talk. That's, that's the chatter. And um, so please, you know, reach out, whether you're here or in, in, on any of the other islands, you know, reach out to your, your uh, representatives and let them know how you feel. Because I'm telling you, it's, it's on a track to be legal. That's the, that's the reality. And, uh, and, and I, I'm honestly uh, afraid of that. You know, I'm, I'm afraid of what the, the downsides will be. Uh, just, the, just the perception that it's okay. The kids will say, you know, wow, it must be okay if, the, if they legalize it. Uh, we all know. We all know. I mean, no one disputes. No one, even the pro-dope people, no one disputes the fact that marijuana on a kid's brain is the worst thing you can do. Um, that it definitely slows down the growth of the brain, that the development of the brain. We all know that. No one disputes that. But yet we will sit behind a, a desk in the square white building on Oahu called the state capitol and find reasons to say that it's okay. Because what they're looking at is the cash that the taxes will bring. Um, if the state of Hawaii legalizes recreational marijuana, can the county of Kauai still keep it illegal? No. I mean, if the state creates a law that makes it legal, then it'll be a state law. Uh, it'll be a state law and then a law that, the, 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 you know, um, the counties would have to comply with. Uh, and and that's, that's the sad part. Yeah, honey, again, um, you're right. And I talked about that earlier. Anyone can go get a card. And, uh, and it's just sad. You know, I've watched this uh, this island, and again, you know, not to bring up the suicide again, but, you know, um, we can sit back and post on Facebook and, you know, why, why, why? Well, you know what? Maybe we need to help this problem in a different way. Maybe we got to – it's called tough love. It's when you go out there and you start cramp, clamping down on the people that are creating these problems for our kids and our young adults and even on our – even our old adults, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's something that I, um, I've been against for, 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 for a very, uh, all my life, been criticized for it. Um, and I'm sure I'll be criticized after this broadcast because there's a lot of people I know on this, on this right now that, that support it, but hear me out. This not something that we want to do, uh, when we're trying to tell our kids that drugs is not the right way to, way to go. Um, you know, it's just not, and and it, it's not just the marijuana. It's it's the oxies. It's it, it's fentanyl. It's all of these things now. Heroin. Heroin has has made a, a, a an alarming comeback on Kauai, and uh, and and you know, there's no real discussion. There's no real discussion about it. You know, where's the feds? Where's the where's the the interstate transportation of drugs? You know, the president wants to build a wall in Mexico. Well, the, the drugs ain't coming through the wall. The drugs are coming in planes and in boats and in barges. And, you know, why aren't we going after the real suppliers of these drugs? Yeah, because because of the corruption. I mean, it's just frustrating. So, you know what? We, we can only do what we can do. And I think locally, locally, we rather than get dogs for snakes, we get dogs to go after the drug supply that's coming in on a daily basis on a daily basis unbelievable okay 15 more minutes left let's see you okay yeah. i'm so like yeah. your mom um what do you want for christmas anybody what what do you guys say tell me what you want for christmas on uh, i think santa claus actually is on this facebook live uh he's he's watching right now and um Dangerous drugs can be bought on the dark, but can be bought on a dark web. Absolutely, uh, vaping. That's another thing we're talking about now. You know, they they want to clamp down on vaping. They're going through extreme measures 
to uh, clamp down on vaping and uh, you know, in the schools, they, they, you know, they, I mean, they, they, a very high percentage of kids are vaping now. And uh, so now they want to ban the flavored vapes. Uh, they want to just, <laughs> I mean, again, again, you know, let's stop dealing with the symptoms and deal with the root of the problem. Let's end it. End it. Stop it. That's, that's how you fix it. Fentanyl, fentanyl is the number one killer drug. Yeah, it is. I mean, people are dying. Uh, you know, it's a very dangerous drug. Uh, very, very dangerous. Not like the, the other, all of them are dangerous, but fentanyl is one, and that, that the kids uh, don't realize that, and it's, they're dying. Um, they're dying. It's, uh, it's just sad. You know, whenever we, we lose someone, whether they're 85 years old, and, you know, uh, prayers go out to the gentleman that got killed today out in front of 7-Eleven in... Uh, Lawai, um, you know, whenever someone, we lose someone, someone loses their life, it's sad. Uh, but when, when these deaths can be prevented uh, and the government has an, an ability to, to do something, um, that's where I get frustrated. Uh, when, you know, for so many years, we talk about this, this war and, you know, there's people out there that actually disagree that we should be at a war, that we should legalize everything. <laughs> I mean, uh, what the hell is the rationale for that? We'll just legalize every drug. Because then they'll, then they'll be just fine. And these people are, are on drugs, you know. They're on drugs. That's why they say things like that. Peace on earth for all for Christmas. Yes, Francine. Um, you know, Political correctness. People say we cannot say Christmas anymore. That's nonsense. Um, you know, they name their stuff. You know, Waimea still calls their light parade, the Christmas light parade, kudos to the West Side community. Because if you look at the um, Holly Jolly Holiday Fair, uh, it's a Christmas fair. But we can't say Christmas, right? Uh, again, I think, you know, we, you know, we got to stand firm on our beliefs that this, this country was built on, um, I mean, everything, God, you know, <coughs> God bless America, uh, all of our patriotic songs, all of our patriotic songs have God's name in it. Pledge of Allegiance. So you can't do that no more. You cannot. Um, and I don't get it. You know, I remember I spoke at the prayer luncheon one year. I was, I was just so honored to be asked to speak at the mayor's prayer luncheon at Kilohana. This was several years back. And I had this speech that I was uh, prepared. And then when I got up there, I, I just said, you know, people were talking about why, where, where, where did we go wrong? Why is things changing why are our kids doing crazy things why are why why are things so different today um and so when i got up on the stage and i i just you know i and i believe it was the divine intervention and i said that you know if you think about it everything started to go sideways when we took the prayer out of school and and think about it when we stopped and prohibited our kids from praying when we prohibited our kids from saying, I pledge allegiance to the flag, that one nation under God, when we stopped or uh, prohibited all of that, things changed. So I, I'm not going to make this a religious show. I'm just saying that uh, the, 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 the answers to our questions uh, are right in front of our eyes. And sometimes we just, for political correctness, we got to, Stay away from it. I, I say no, 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 no. Yeah, I went, Francine, I went to Catholic school too. Um, uh, you know, and that, that was uh, hard. It was tough. You know, they, they, they spank you. They hit you with the stick. And, uh, you know, it's, but, but if you think about it, that's where everything started to go sideways. Um, let's see. Is the prayers at a government inauguration a conflict between church and state? Um, there's a Supreme Court ruling that actually says you can. Um, you cannot require 
uh, you cannot require the the members of any government body to participate, but um, yeah, you can actually do it. Um, you know, I brought it, when I became the chair four years ago, I, I brought back the prayer to our council meetings and uh, my first term, you know, uh, one member refused to come in and that's fine. It, I don't have a problem with that, but uh, I believe that, that we all, we all know in our heart that there is a higher power. And I know there's some atheists out there good friends of mine. And that's why I'm not going to, you know, convince them that God is real. I don't have to, but um, we all know, I think most of us know that, uh, that we, we, we rely on that higher power every time we're in trouble. You know, we'll, we'll say a quick prayer. God, if you help me in this one, I promise I will go to church. Hey, God, if you help me in this one, I promise I'll be a better person. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we all know. I mean, really, just think back to your younger days when you went to school and, and you know, it was, it, was, it was okay. It was okay. And, and, uh, and now, gosh, again, you know, ACLU and all these other organizations that step on my rights uh, because someone else is, is uncomfortable with. Uh... Thank you, Bethany. Pray without ceasing. I don't care what religion, what God you believe in. I don't care if you're whatever. Uh, Gabby, aloha, Gabby. Uh, pray without ceasing is really um, the, the 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 word of the day. How's that? Pray without ceasing. Yeah, I don't know. I wish I was a principal of a school. I would challenge that thing, man. I just say, no, we're gonna do it, and you want you go sue me, and uh, and let, let a jury decide. Because really, you know, you you know, you can't have your cake and eat it too. We do. We we want things to be how they used to be but we're not willing to do what we used to do right we, we we're not willing to do what we used to do so um but yet we want to enjoy how things were and i mean it's, it's just how it is nowadays and that's the frustration that's the frustrating part of of uh, living in today's world wherever you're at whether you're on Kauai or new york or it doesn't matter um that that is where we're at today it's uh we don't want to offend anybody so we're gonna you know we're gonna prohibit and, and again step on my rights because someone else is offended that I, I put my hand on my heart and I say uh, one nation under God hey if you don't like it here adios that's the way I look at it okay six more minutes any closing comments from anybody um, what we got coming up this week um, Another problem is that the kids have too much right, so it puts parents, teachers in a hard place to discipline. Yeah, well, you know, um, I never did beat my kids. Uh, never had to. But I can tell you that my, my kids were, were convinced that um, if, they, uh, if they did something really, really stupid, that there'd be some extreme consequences. I mean, they, they knew that. Um, but I didn't have to beat them up. You know, I didn't have to go lick them and any of that. But... You know, I think there is a line, a, a very uh, uh, a line between discipline and abuse. And I, I think that discipline, you need discipline. I think every kid needs to know that if they do something stupid, that they may get a pat on the butt. You know, they may get the, the belt or the, I mean, we, you know, within reason. We used to get the hang or the yardstick. And uh, <laughs> it's just how it is. And you just, you knew you're not going to do that again because you're going to get it again. And be worse. So, again, you know, we, we, we change things along the way, but we expect uh, everything not to change. What do I want for Christmas, Christmas, Bethany? Well, you know, I just want this place to be a much better place. You know, I just want this place. I want every one of our leaders. I want every, every one of our parents. I want every one of our kids. I want every one of our grandparents. I want everybody to understand that this is everyone's problem and that we all got to work together. And uh, while we, we may often disagree, I think at the end of the day, we got to accept the fact that we will have differences and that it's okay to have differences, but yet, um, but we can do it in a, in a, in a civilized way. Um, you know, I don't know how you get that across because of uh, egos and pride and, and, and of course, corruption and money and all of that stuff but that is what i would want you know i'm you know i i think i'd love a yacht 
I'd really love a little uh, a plane, but those things I can live without that. And I think when I'm, uh, I was told long ago that everything in your life, you know, on your headstone is going to have a, a day you was born and a day that you died, and in between those two day, the years is going to be a dash. And that everything is in the dash. That was the that was the theme. That was the saying. Everything's in the dash. When you're laying on your deathbed, you want to make sure that you did everything that you possibly could uh, to make this place a better place. And, you know, I, I, a lot of us, if not all of us, try. In our own way, we try. And, and yet, we, you know, together we, we can do so much more. If we came together, if we all uh, agree, understand that, um, if we understand and agree that drugs are a problem, then we should be able to sit down and figure out a way to, to fix that problem or at least reduce the, the impacts. Um, but no, it's because no one is willing to really uh, concede or um, compromise. And I think that is where we all got to do better, including myself. So uh, if I, if I, you know, if I, if I could get that in the Christmas, um, wake up Christmas morning and Santa left me a, a little note saying, Hey Mel, uh, starting today, everybody's going to be, um, uh, willing to work together and compromise and and uh, come up with some solutions that that be a, a, a great Christmas present, a great great great, great Christmas present. Um, I'm just reading my phone over here, checking my my comments on the phone as well. So, yeah, it's uh, we used to get hit with the clo closest things to my parents. Yeah, that I remember. Um, yeah, whatever was close by, wooden spoon, the the rice spoon. <coughs> You know, the other thing too is um, we we can never forget our veterans, our troops that aren't here. You know, a lot of people that are in in foxholes and some really freaking cold places right now. Uh, that that this never discussed, it's never talked about. You know, it's you know we 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 get so many troops every day committing suicide. You don't hear about those. Um, and yet, whenever we have a crisis, you know, we expect them to you know perform flawlessly so i mean i think for all of us as we go and put our heads to the pillow whether you believe in god or whoever um that we say a prayer for for our troops all of them whether they're here or abroad or just you know i think they need our prayers they they you know just make them feel um loved so that they know you know when they're sleeping in a freezing ass cold uh that just let them somehow know that the people back home you know, really appreciate what they're doing. Uh, and that is, uh, that I think is, is something that I would hope that we can all do, um, our little part, a little quick prayer. Pray without ceasing. Okay, doke. Okay. Anyway, uh, does the ACLU agree with government agencies decorating the facilities? <laughs> no, I mean, you know, hypocrisy in government in this world is rampant. You know, because if if you you hit it right in the head, if we can have no association with Christmas or with God or Christ or Jesus or the birth of Jesus, then why is it okay in ACL? And I'm not please don't get me wrong. I don't want to say we come around suing the county because we put lights and and stuff at at the at the county building. But um, you're exactly right. You know, again, it's it's people do things. Um, they have ulterior motives, you know. Uh, organizations do things to bring notoriety, to bring uh, fame and and money and donations. So uh, I don't know. I believe in God. I believe that Jesus was born on Christmas Day. And I believe that um, we should celebrate that every chance we get. So anyway, it's 630. I got a bail. Sorry, you guys. We'll be back next week. Same time, same place, 530 on uh, Wednesday. And, um, you know, if you guys got anything, topics you want to talk about, shoot them over to me in a message, email, text, whatever. And uh, let's, let's, let's have some good discussion. And uh, remember, remember, we all got to live here in this place. And, it's, and, and it, gets, it gets harder and harder every day. So let me just say um, Merry Christmas to all of you. Um, I, we'll, we'll chat before Christmas. But. Um, it's a holiday. This is my wife here again. Say hi. Merry Christmas from the Raposa household. And I will see you guys next week. Love you guys. God bless. Aloha. No. Talk to you guys soon. Aloha.